Manta and devil rays are highly migratory animals. They roam the oceans and they know no boundaries. We know very little about them, but for some reason they come to the Azores every summer. And if we understand why they're coming here and how can we protect these places, that will be helpful towards their conservation. My name is Ana Filipe Sural. I'm a marine biologist, and I've been studying the mobula rays in the Azores. Being a marine biologist, I think the Azores is an amazing place. We're sitting on the top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and there's thousands of seamounts around this area. And the Ambrosio Seamount is located three nautical miles from north shore of Santa Maria Island. Is one of only a few places in the world where sickle fin devil rays come and gather in, in big groups. If we can understand the importance of these seamounts for these species, we might help their conservation directly, not only locally, but globally. I miss this deep blue color. I think I've only seen it here in the Azores. We're constantly learning more about these animals. We are not sure yet why they do come and aggregate here. We have a lot of pregnant females, but no one has ever seen juveniles here. This might be a pit stop on their migration, could be for socializing. When they're seen together, they interact. So there's like this dance and one follows the other, so it's really interesting. In the Azores, we actually have three species. The sickle fin devil ray is the one we see more commonly. They can reach up to three meters, so they're quite big. Mantas and devil rays have the biggest brain of all fish relative to their body size. They're very curious towards divers. They really come to you, turn their eye to you, and you can look eye to eye, and they really interact with divers, and I think it makes these encounters really, really memorable. Here in the Azores, these animals are protected, but manta and devil rays are highly migratory animals. It means that they can actually be protected in one place, but if they go from here to another place, it doesn't mean that they will not be fished there. They are fished for their gills. They're also caught as bycatch and they are entangled in fishing gear a lot of time. And these are animals that are in constant movement since the moment they're born. So they have to constantly swim in order to have water pass through their gills so they can breathe. So the fact that they get entangled means that they can drown. It's very hard to effectively protect them. They face quite a few threats in different parts of the world. People used to be afraid of these animals because they were big. Sometimes small fishing boats, if they would get stuck in the anchor line, they would just try to keep swimming forward and that will drag the boat. So people used to think that they were trying to uh, sink the boat. So they were actually feared and it's crazy to think that nowadays people travel here from you know, different parts of the world specifically to dive with these animals. Research around manta rays has revolved around photo ID for a long time. The sickle fin devil ray is actually the only one that has a pattern on its ventral side, a contour between a gray area and a white area. Every animal has a unique pattern, so basically works like our fingerprints. So in the last 10 years, I've been collecting every image that I can from uh, manta and devil rays seen here in the Azores. And I've used that to create the only database that exists at the moment for the sickle fin devil ray. I look for uh, identifiable traits in the pattern, like spots or scars, sometimes the coloration around the gill area. One of the interesting cases we have is uh, our individual number 26, and this is a female 
that was photographed in 2011 for the first time, you can clearly say that it's pregnant. The next recite was in 2019 and it was pregnant again. So this could be important information if we want to understand how often these animals give birth. There's still a lot we don't know about these animals and that will be crucial to help conserve them in the future. So the images basically come from citizen science. Staff from the dive centers, guests that they have diving with them. Philippe was one of the photographers that identified this, this ray. So he's one of the persons that has been participating in the project. He works here at one of the dive schools and he's been participating since the very beginning. So I'm Philip. I came to Santa Maria first time in 2004 to work as a scuba instructor. The first time I saw a manta ray, it was here in Santa Maria, and it was magical. They are giant and they are really friendly. And uh, she told me that she would like to have pictures of the bellies of the animals, so she could try to identify them. I was just like, okay, I will help you for sure. The whole project is basically due to these people that take a bit of time and they contribute to the project and that's been what's kept it going. We don't always have the chance to be out in the water and dive centers and guests go there every day, several times a day sometimes. So we can expand our data collection but also I think it's rewarding for people to be able to contribute, to learn a bit more about these animals and why we should act for their conservation. It's always good to know when your pictures are contributing for something that's relevant. When I first started this project, the, the conservation status of uh, sickle fin devil was actually data deficient. We did not even have enough information to be able to understand what was their conservation status. And nowadays they are classified as endangered. If we can understand the importance of these habitats and these regions like the Azores, it's a step in the right direction in conserving these species. Being in the water with these animals is always fantastic, no matter how many times you do it. It feels like a really immense privilege to be able to be with them in their natural environment and just interact with them. Every time that happens, time stops for a little bit. 